Hello! Welcome back to Vidorama, where we remember the VHS releases of the past in graphic detail. My name's Arvon Jones, and today I'm going to be painting a tribute to the 1982 slasher, Madman. I'm going to have a campfire, and I'm going to have Max, the counsellor, sitting behind telling the story, and I'll have Madman in the middle with an axe, and... Well, I'll tell you what, come round this side and I'll show you. Okay. So, on this channel we celebrate the movies that we rented on VHS back in the day. I rewatch the movie, make notes and sketch out ideas. The drawing is done in pen and I then photocopy that onto card for painting. Detail is then reapplied with pens. The colours used for this piece were cadmium yellow, titanium white, and rather appropriately, Mars Black. So it all started during a campfire at North Sea Cottages, a special retreat for gifted children. Madman, originally titled Madman The Legend Lives, is a horribly underrated slasher. Written and directed by Joe Giannoni, I hope I said that right, and the story tells of an axe-wielding farmer named Madman Mars, who, having murdered his family, is hung from a tree by an angry mob before being summoned back into existence by a group of campers sitting around a campfire. Mars soon starts to stalk and murder the camp's counsellors. Now, if your instinct is to dismiss this film as a Friday the 13th rip-off, it's your loss. Although it's fair to say that the success of Friday the 13th played a part and certainly made the film possible, it is in fact loosely based on the Cropsey Maniac urban legend from Staten Island, New York. I would argue that it's a movie adaptation of a urban legend, a campfire tale realised as a movie, if you will. I wanted to capture the campfire aspect of the movie in this painting and so I opted to have the fire be the central image with the camp counsellor Max seemingly telling the tale next to it, uh, setting the scene. Max was played by Carl Fredericks. I thought he was great in this. Interestingly, they wanted Vincent Price for the role of Max, but as the movie was non-union, they decided against it. And so Giannoni and Sales wanted to make movies. They had graduated from Richmond College and realised that before they could make the movies they wanted to make, they would need to start with a low-budget, crowd-pleasing movie first, and then the success of that movie would make their other projects possible. And it was around this time, 1980, that Friday the 13th had become a huge commercial success. Suddenly, the doors that were previously closed to indie studios were open and so it was decided that the first movie they produced should be a horror. Sales remembered the old Cropsy Maniac tale and so they used that as a basis for the story and wrote a screenplay while trying to secure financial backing. Interestingly, or at least I think so, a year later having now secured financing and only two weeks away from shooting they were understandably concerned when they discovered that a movie based on the Cropsy Maniac was already five weeks into production. Worried that they would be accused of stealing the idea, they managed to track down the production team working on that movie and borrowed their script, and they made the necessary alterations to their own story. Cropsy was changed to Madman Mars, inspired by Holst Planet Suite. These last minute alterations delayed things for them somewhat, so much so that it was late October before they were able to start filming. And so they found themselves actually having to paint the dead leaves green in order to make it seem as if the film was taking place in the summer. Uh, the movie that was ahead of them was of course The Burning, released in 1981. Now I'm working on Madman Mars himself. An underrated protagonist, played by Paul Ehlers, who was originally hired as an illustrator for the film's poster and production art. He was responsible for the gnarled tree designs that look like hands we see in the title sequence. He was offered the role of Mars as he not only had the right build for it, his martial arts training meant that he was more than capable of jumping around swinging an axe. He loved horror and he threw himself into this role. Apparently he would listen to John Carpenter's score for Halloween before his scenes. 
I love the story that uh, during production his wife was pregnant and so he had a beeper on him should she go into labour, which did happen during a scene and so he dashed off partly made up as Madman Mars to the hospital where his son Jonathan was born. Ayla still works as an artist and designs amazing one-of-a-kind knives and weapons. Actually, I'll uh, post a link in the description to his work. We don't actually see all that much of Mars in this movie. Uh, not full close-ups anyway. Just the occasional shot in shadow or silhouette. Great if you're trying to establish a tone for your horror movie, but it's not so great if you're an artist trying to find reference shots for your painting. I'm just adding the detail with a pen, highlighting the various wrinkles and scars. I wanted to try and do that wispy hair justice. I mentioned how I wanted to incorporate the campfire into the painting. I also thought it would be interesting to have the faces of his victims feature as faces in the flames. By all accounts, everyone looks back on the making of this movie fondly, with affection. I think this comes across in the film, there's heart to it. They had hoped it would lead to a sequel, but it wasn't to be. Just adding some stray sparks lifting from the flames. But yeah, uh, misguided movie critics. Those wet blankets Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert featured this movie on their Dogs of the Week segment. It seems that the only movie critic that stood up for them was Joe Bob Briggs. But 40 years later, many have finally seen the light and the movie is finally getting some appreciation. Apparently it was named one of the greatest slasher films of all time by Complex Magazine in 2017. Just defining the faces in the flames. This is the face of Tony Fish who played TP in the film. He represents just one of the unique kills in the movie. This was actually Tony Fish's only film role, and it seems he only had one night to memorise that memorable Madman Ma song. Sadly, Tony Fish passed away back in 2010. I'll just add my signature. Almost there, kids. I mentioned Joe Bob Briggs before. Madman was one of the movies that featured on the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs last year. And this, rather conveniently, presents me the opportunity to inform you that this very painting can be found in issue 9 of the Joe Bob Briggs fan scene. The fan scene, for those of you that don't know, is filled with fascinating content. It contains numerous articles and interviews and artwork provided by many talented people. It's devoted to the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs and covers all manner of subjects relating to Joe Bob, Darcy the Male Girl and of course the movies that feature on the show. I've been a contributor for some time now and it's a wonderful project to be involved with. So if you're interested in horror, cult movies or just Joe Bob in general, check the link in the description and order your copy today. Thank you for joining me today and keeping me company. I hope it was of interest. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like as it all helps the channel as does clicking that subscribe button. And if you want to go a step further, ring the bell and check out the Vidorama Video Club. Details for that can also be found in the description. But until the next video, thanks again for watching. Bye for now.